like I said, this bike is not even sweating hard. My God, what a beast. Let's go for a ride starting out in the cemetery here as you can see because that's where you most likely end up when you ride this thing. Alright, for those of you who care, I am in race mode right now. Uh, DTC is level 3, I do have the quick shifter up and down, uh, electronic suspensions and dynamic, ABS 1, engine braking level 1, DSC level 2, DWC level 1. We'll kind of dump jump into a little bit of you know more of what that means and everything but you know i gotta say this bike is truly impressive on so many levels but not all of them necessarily for the sheer performance of it. I mean, right now, fifth gear, 40 miles an hour, cruising along in traffic, and it's totally fine with it. No real complaints from the bike at all. It is really amazing to me how absolutely refined, smooth, and rideable this bike is, considering the performance of it. 214 brake horsepower, 430 pound curb weight. This thing is an absolute freaking rocket ship yet still completely reasonable unlike its predecessor the 1299 which wanted to kill you and your whole family every time you looked at it now it should come as no surprise that this thing is super fast but to fully explain how fast it is i've been kind of trying to think about how i'm going to put into words just how insanely fast this bike is it's kind of hard to describe without actually being able to experience it yourself and it's not necessarily the 0 to 60 time or anything like that but let's say when you're in the triple digits already and just how hard and fast this thing accelerates is truly unreal Rambo M4.30 monoblock calipers two of them up front with 330 millimeter rotors this thing stops quicker than a cartoon it seems like not only that the handling is so incredibly sharp and we'll get into a couple reasons why that is one of them is going to be those beautiful olin's electronic forks up front with the olin's electronically adjustable shock out back this suspension is absolutely unbelievable monitoring inputs thousands of times per second you lay this thing over in a corner and hit some bumps and you think it's really going to upset the chassis and get all squirrely on you and it just kind of pops right over and pull, keeps on going and holds the line it's insane you can you can cut razor wire with this thing it is so precise another reason is in this 1103 cc v4 engine the crankshaft is counter rotating so that means it spins backwards relative to the rotation of the wheels going forward and that counteracts the gyroscopic effect of those wheels it makes this thing super flickable it handles much better than a lot of 600s i've ridden and uh you know comparable in thousands or comparable leader bikes just forget it also with that v4 engine this bike is accompanied with what i think is probably the best quick shifter i've ever felt in my life so smooth so intrinsically engaging so instantaneous it is absolutely delightful to use no hiccups no fuss no fuss and on uh, a bike with this performance level that's what you really need because a few milliseconds here or there could really uh could really turn into a bad day of course full tft display we got up here i kind of ran through some of the electronic suites a little earlier we'll talk more about that of course owen's steering dampener there as well all kind of beautiful things on this uh one thing it is missing though however is a fuel gauge which is uh you know to be honest with you not the biggest deal breaker in the world for this type of bike uh i mean 
not really something that you're super concerned about uh, fuel mileage or doing a long trip on necessarily so you're gonna go out there and uh, light your hair on fire and uh, and then eventually might stop for gas if you make it to the gas station quick shifter does auto blip on the downshifts like I said absolutely beautiful feeling this V4 motor is just a gem, just an absolute gem. They offset the firing of the pistons to five degrees. So in uh, characteristics, it's like a, it's like their older V twins, but uh, or L twins, but a little smoother, a little bit more linear and power delivery. The noise that comes out of this thing is great, even on stock pipes. It is relatively loud, which is actually kind of surprisingly loud, given uh, all the uh, you know restrictions nowadays. So, like I said before, this bike is actually uh, completely reasonable to ride on the street. Believe it or not, relatively comfortable. Seat isn't too high. The bars, uh, you know, they're low, obviously, but. Uh, it's, it's not bad at all, especially when you're moving and got that wind kind of heat hitting you, keeping you up a little bit. Uh, the mirrors are totally useless, just like on pretty much any other super sport, but that's okay. The way that this bike pulls in sixth gear makes you think that you're in third gear on some other bike. Like the, 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 the pull and the hit is so instantaneous that I find myself often cruising around, you know, carving up some turns in sixth gear and uh, try to go to upshift because I did, my brain thinks I'm in a lower gear just by the way of how hard I'm accelerating and how instantaneous that power comes on. It is a bit hot today and um, people usually complain about the heat, the under the seat heat I should say of Ducatis. I gotta say, it's definitely noticeable. Um, but again, for me, it's never been something to cry about or to, you know, a severe deal breaker for the bike. I mean, you just got to take into account that, yeah, if you're sitting in traffic, there's going to be some heat building up underneath your ass and you just got to deal with it. I mean, it's all part of the nature of these bikes. These, I mean, the Panigale is built for one thing and that's performance. I mean, so if you're riding this bike, uh, thinking it's a you know bar hopping cruiser or a, you know cross country tour, you're going to be sorely disappointed. The performance threshold of this motorcycle is so incredibly high that you know doing 120 on this bike is analogous to doing like 60 miles an hour in your mother's Toyota Camry, and it's so hard for non motorcyclists to wrap their head around that. I feel. Like the way that this thing handles speed, it's just, it's, it's, it's so nonchalant. It's, you know, this thing was obviously engineered and built to do some ridiculous speeds and to do some crazy turning and braking and accelerating at those speeds. So, like I said, 120 on this is really like just a walk in the park for it. Really, it's not even... Right, here's what I'm gonna do for you guys we're gonna do a little fourth gear pull here you see fourth gear about uh, 57 58 100 rpm around 65 miles an hour I'm just gonna roll it on So this thing is no joke fast and the thing is though it doesn't feel uncomfortable doing that it doesn't feel sketchy it doesn't feel like you know the world is ending super smooth just like oh you know uh, that was it <laughs> you know the bike the bike is capable of so much more than you are trust me guys it, fe it feels like the 
the faster and harder you ride it it just it just keeps wanting more there is n it, seemingly no limits this thing is so quick just when you think a motorcycle can't be any faster than an fz10 or a cbr 1000 double r or any leader bike uh, just when you think it just it can't get any faster there's no way uh, a bike like this shows up and just it just totally changes your perspective on everything now a lot of you guys may be looking at this bike as like a you know hyper sport bike whatever and then you know trying to compare it to something like a hayabusa or zx14 or uh the h2 for that matter and i'm gonna be totally honest with you guys this bike is not even in the same class as those bikes it you know a hayabusa or zx14 it's just a, a giant sport bike with a giant motor and yes they can obtain some crazy high speed but think about it this thing is higher horsepower and what a hundred pounds less weight i mean it it, it, it's not even in the same category as those other bikes. You can feel the power really start to come on around 7,500, 8 grand. I'm taking it easy right now that wasn't even half throttle I mean this thing is just so freaking fast Woo! my god the way this thing pulls at 90 miles an hour it's like how other bikes pull at freaking 40 miles an hour. end doesn't push at all like if I just did that same turn I just did at the same speed on that CBR 1000 double R I did a couple weeks ago it would have pushed wide and it would have been really squirrely this thing leans over digs in and just begs for more handling is freaking telepathic gear cresting the hill hit it right in the meat of the, the range what a freaking missile look at this just digs in and carves oh my god if you see somebody riding Panigale V4S. I hate to break it to you, but they're at some point going to break the law. It's almost impossible not to. Lower down, whoa! <laughs> Put on the brakes. What a machine! Oh my god! Your eyes go straight from the back of your head out the front of your head and hit the visor on the inside of the helmet.
Of course, I'm in race mode, so ABS is disabled on the rear. All that weight transferred to the front. You probably see that little bit of uh, shimmy on the back end because the front or the rear got so light. What a freaking beast! I was talking in the CBR video about how you know that last 10% of performance really takes an extra 90% worth of effort uh, in terms of engineering and building something crazy this is exactly what I was talking about yeah it's it's almost 30 grand and yeah there's bikes that are half the price that are realistically nearly as fast on the road sure but I am telling you there is absolutely no comparison between this bike and most of the other standard leader bikes and I'm not just talking about engine guys I mean I really gotta hammer this point home just how sharp and precise the handling is on this and you just you cannot upset it you cannot push its buttons it always wants more you cannot outride this bike believe me you cannot do it on the street that is anyway and if you're doing it on the track you know uh, you, you I mean, we're talking some Valentino Rossi, Jorge Lorenzo, Mark Marquez type stuff here. I mean, this thing is just a freaking weapon. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Damn, it's like being shot out of a cannon. Hit that auto blipper. Bring it around the corner here. All right, I'm gonna cut it wide. Bring it in for the apex. Oh, some bumps on the way in. It doesn't care. Fifth gear, rolling it out. What a machine, oh my God. Like I said, this bike is not even sweating hard. Oh my God, what a beast. Using one finger on the brake, by the way. Low speed corner, dip it in. No problem. Oh my god. What a freaking spaceship. Absolutely wicked. So in summary, I mean, I think it, the bike pretty much speaks for itself if you watch the whole video. But uh, I mean, this is just, uh, it, it, it's just the pinnacle of performance that, that you're going to find in a street legal motorcycle, this side of the Panigale R or something insane like that or like BMW HP4 race or something just absolutely bonkers.